be this engaged. We actually kind of talked about this uh, previously with Gamer Legion and Sacre. They're actually just going to go for an all-out tank, someone who can start these fight, uh, well, follow up on the fights, but also just target people like Reckless, target people like Saken and Cabo. It's going to be a rougher laning phase for Jaeger, absolutely, but he's going to be able to offer a lot with this pick. And X7, this feels like what they drafted versus uh, versus Kamen Corp at the beginning of the day, just better. It's just like it's like an improved version of this uh, pick. So We're moving into playoffs, and that's when we get into our best of series. That's when it is on teams to show, you know, what they can change going in. And like I said, there's there's been two games between these two playing versus each other, but it still feels a little best of -y. There's, uh, you know, some adaptations and what we've learned from earlier versus each other. And we are on to the rift for our tiebreaker. Carmen Corp and X7, both 5-1 in Group B. The winner of this game takes first in this group and dodges a first seed from a different group. As uh, oh. Is he actually looking for a cheeky invade here? Really good spot right oh, there. Harry. Oh, Didn't flash, didn't respect it. Has to flash over the wall. That is actually super huge because remember the three rule step for 1-1-3. One, one, hmm. On Zinza versus Javan, he starts blue side into full clear top into uh, invade, into the enemy jungle. Now, Haru needs to be very respectful. He might even start towards the bot side of the map this time. So he can uh, evade the invade from the side of 113, but actually 113 is going to start towards his bot side of the map and he's going to be spotted because Kasing and Nata actually very cleverly moved in and they're going to spot where 113 starts. Well, they will see him on the ward. Well, see the ward and take it out. Um... Interesting as well, a little adaptation. Haru ran Conqueror last time on the uh, Jarvan. He's actually running the first strike this time. Let's see if that uh, changes anything for him. As this bot lane kind of just got gapped. I think it's the fairest way to put it. Because Zing and Nata were just losing the 2v2. A lot of attention was towards the top side last game. Well, last time they played versus each other. And Nata and Kasing were just kind of losing the 2v2 in this in this exact matchup last time. So going to be interesting to see exactly how they play this matchup out this time around. See Hunter and no flash available does have that hex flash. So always have to be a little bit aware of him just flashing out of the bush. Yeah, and X7 have a priority in the bot side of the map as well. They know that Haru is going to get spotted. So Haru, I don't think he's going to try to pull any of his level 2, especially since the bot lane has been pushed. And because he doesn't have his flash available as well, this is going to make it even harder, especially if 113 mirrors him. So they're going to go for most likely the full clear onto the Javan. Uh, Zinza is going to mirror on the other side as well. And we're going to have a little bit of a, a late off early game, if you will. Uh, Cabo has priority mid, tempt. Uh, was really good into the Ari matchup onto his LeBlanc in the previous game as well. So yeah. we expect to sort of see the same thing. And as you can see, both side of the map has priority for X7. Top side of the map has priority for KC. Temp was definitely the shining light for X7 in the previous game. Really, really clean on the uh, on the LeBlanc into the Ari matchup. And it is a skill matchup. Um, so it's nice to see. It's nice to see that Temp, you know, was able to handle this wave and handle this lane. Actually did have, uh, does currently have a farm lead over Saken, although Saken is going to be able to catch most of this wave himself, or KC. But you said, here's the three steps from Kit from him. Does one camp, does another camp, and then that third step potentially look for a dive top side. Temp does so, have teleport if they need worry, to. My worry here is that Cabo doesn't have a lot of mana. Jaeger just got his passive up as well, and if you manage to flash the mark from the Zinzao, uh, you can get out, but Tempt, as you mentioned, has the TP. He's going to defend his top lane, and that is actually huge. The Malphite not dying here is pretty big because he had a lot of minions underneath the tower. Now, Tempt can actually stay top lane versus Kaboshat, who is low uh, on mana, and try to bully him away, while Jaeger, Jaeger will run mid to try and catch that wave. And then yeah. they will swap again. Actually interrupted the uh, back of Kaboshat as well. Yeah. Jaeger, Jaeger catches this wave. He's wanting as much free farm as possible. Starting to stack a little bit of armor, not too much. But Jaeger happy to pick up whatever he can. And we'll probably see him actually just hold mid for a while. He's quite happy to catch these waves. He's probably under less poke and less harass versus the R even. He is the LeBlanc for the moment. So Temp quite happy just to shove this wave in. Give up his mid farm for a little bit and then make his way back towards mid in a moment. Yeah, he's going to make sure that he shoves in that wave uh, as well. And then you see that Jaeger shoved in mid wave and now they're going to actually back buy some items and the LeBlanc will be on the map. I want to see what he will come back with. He should have... Oh! Okay, so we're going for boots 
Ren Ring, which to me means that once Harrow has his flask up and available, we might see a lot of skirmishes. It is usually Saken that mirrors 113 whenever he wants to play, invade or play aggressive. But so far, we haven't necessarily seen 113 pull out anything aggressive in this game. They tried for the dive top lane, but it was instantly dissipated by uh, Temp's teleport. And uh, Temp diving straight into Hunter and Saken. No Temp. Temp honestly just gives no dams. He is quite happy to jump into a Nautilus Ari and be confident that he can get the trade off without getting CC'd. It's really, oh. really crisp from Temp. Oh, this is rough. This is rough. Jaeger's wave is actually pushing towards Cabochard, but he cannot actually step that far forward. He actually has to wait for the wave to bounce back. And with the way that the minions are, it is going to bounce back, but it's going to take a little bit of time. So he needs to make sure that he stays uh, within experience range whilst also not getting ganked and not dying, which has worked so far for him. X7 are banking in the dragons again if you think you have the better team you usually play a little bit more passive in the early and try to go and scale towards that late game now this is not necessarily the truth right here because you can actually play the mid game fires you've got the leblanc javan combo you've got the the misfortune that on eclipse you really hard spike especially uh once he puts down that ultimate and you can uh pressure people with it and push them out of choke points so x7 have a bunch of answers and a bunch of ways they can play the game here yeah, absolutely. I believe that top lane situation was kind of caused from uh, Temp not being able to deal with the wave and completely shove it while Kavishard teleported in. Jaeger has to be careful, though. He's actually maybe playing a little bit of bait here. Saken's going to jump forward, gets caught by the knockout, gets caught by the charm. Here comes Haru. They're dodging out. They find the first blood onto Saken. And this time it's KC who have the advantage. And look oh. at the size of that wave. Jaeger losing out heavily Tempt. here as Temp's going to try and catch it. Does have the distortion available. Dodges out on a lot of damage in the charm there, but he's still going to sure, go relatively low. Sure, but he's going to get bogged down. He doesn't have his W cooldown now, but he has to oh, flash to die. Dead. 113 is able to find him. They are going to find an answer out here from Haru, but he gets charmed up himself. Saken's taking a lot of tower shots. Kabu oh. taking so much response, uh, damage in response. Oh my god. And they're continuing to chase for a little bit more. A good flag and drag could maybe save Haru's life and potentially get him a kill, but he's just going to try and flag away. The Foxfire movement speed from Saken not going to get him enough to catch up. And it was a it was a sloppy little fight in the top side. That is some really good stuff, though, from Carmine Corp. 28 CS onto that Malphite versus 54 onto the Lucian. And even though Jaeger does respect the fact there's a fat wave building up underneath his tower, he doesn't respect the fact that Tempt has actually pinged the SS onto Saken, and they have been trying take Jaeger down this entire game. There was no respect towards the Ari Roma towards the top side of the map. He ends up being punished. And now Temp is trying to make a play right here, but he instantly gets spotted by Saken. Has to use his flash defensively as well, whilst dodging everything. And then Haru is left all alone underneath the tower. He will grab one kill for himself. But all in all, look at all this experience and gold that completely got lost underneath that tower. The true winners of this trade is Kamako. I do feel, though, you have a couple of things to kind of keep in mind in this game. Now, this might be a little bit of hopium. Let's be real. But X7, you know, okay. Jaeger's now hit, level 6. Hit me NLC, fanboy. Hit me. Jaeger's now level 6. That's all a Malphite really needs <laughs> is just to be able to ult. In the meanwhile, Nacta, who was shut out of the last game, is completely okay for the moment. But we're looking for the fight. The Dragon, uh, sorry, the Rift Herald was taken away there by 113. He's here? able to steal it away. In comes the backup, though. They've got a little bit more damage. Cap is going low. And Katsing's able to find the kill. X7 are skirmishing. But look at every time they skirmish, they lose a massive wave somewhere else on the map. Absolutely. I think X7 right now are very objective obsessed i would have to say they went for that early dragon they're going for that early herald they're trying to win back whatever they've lost through that trade on the top side of the map and yeah they do punish uh cabo shard but he doesn't really lose much because look on the bot side of the map reckless is gonna cash in on two tower platings whilst the commitment for the rift trail was put on the top side of the map luckily for them they managed to actually rotate for x7 they're bot then towards the top side of the map there was only one assist uh for the side of nata as well so i'm waiting to see where this rift trail is actually going to go because for me oh. i think the biggest investment you can do is give it to tempt but jaeger is yet again in trouble no flash no ult yeah, he is not that tanky yet, unfortunately. Knocked up, bopped no, up, taken Haru. down. Haru has no flash. Haru has nowhere to go. 
and another ginormous wave is denied from the side of X7. KC are just playing a complete denial game here. I think they're actually putting their mark on this game. I think getting Kabul shot ahead has always been the play for Kamai Corp. Getting uh, Jaeger on a weak side tank has always been the plan uh, for Kamai Corp. They just did not want him on the own. That scales into the late game and gives the ornaments later on. But Malfa can get heavily punished right here. He's one and a half thousand gold behind as well. And right here, Jaeger, I think he should have been left for that. That anchor, first of all, should have never yes, hit. No, yeah. Rito, thank you. Not a list uh, stuff there. And right here, Haru goes back in, knowing that his Malphite is dead to rights. And again, these are sort of like the mistakes that we see that are very uncharacteristic from someone like Haru mm. uh, that could get heavily punished because this is yet another kill that goes towards the side of K-Corp, whilst Haru could have stayed alive and soaked up all that experience and gold from that huge minion wave that gathered underneath Jaeger's tower. Jaeger definitely stacking as much armor as possible. Like you were kind of alluding to, Seiken is the only AP threat right now in this game. So at least for Jaeger, his itemization early should be relatively easy. The question is, is, is he going to get enough gold to get that itemization completed? Is uh, X7, while their top lane is a bit of a dumpster fire, their bot lane, actually pretty decent. Nasa, even though he's down in farm, partly because he did that roam, still able to afford himself a lot of pressure. Now, 113 is going to jump in forwards, looks for the steal, not able to find it, pops himself the ultimate, and this should just be a kill for Nasa. Oh, that's a lot Nata. of sustain coming in. 113! What an outplay! He's able to find a kill. He's looking for the second. The hook's going to come in. Ooh. They're trying to find a response. They get the knockoff as Kasing. Kasing finds the kill, and now Hantera has to be careful. Reckless is in the area. So X7 are just going to call it here for the moment, unless this hook hits. Kasing could be in for a world of hurt. He tries to go for the escape, but he's not going to be able to do so. Reckless finds the kill. X7 again, way overextended. Look at the top side of the map. Everything is going wrong for X7. And KC have the number on every single lane. And this is exactly what happens when you run back a composition that you've already lost on your opponents who know exactly what you're doing. Kamek up, you know what's happening exactly. This happened at EU Masters 2021 Summer Finals. Fnatic Rising back then run the exact same comp that they lost game one versus Kamai Corp and Kamai Corp beat them in both games because they knew exactly that he suffered exactly how to do that and they're doing that again. They're exploiting the mistakes. They're hammering top lane. They put Jaeger on the weak side. Oh, they're hammering top Jaeger. lane. They're feeding Cabochard and they have just not let Jaeger play the game at all. He has no one as well. He just has to give up. He might be able to kill a minion or two, but that is it. He's just losing gold, he's losing farm, and he's going to lose his tower plates and all. That is two towers with plates over to the side of KC as they get their 11th plate in the mid lane. Look at the gold deficit, 5,000. X7 are just so far behind. And we're seeing some real problems in the early game from X7. This is uncharacteristic of week one from them. They are looking to turn on to 113. Jaeger finds a good two man ultimate, but there's no damage. There's no backup. There's no follow up. Temp's trying to come over the wall. Cabo's able to dodge well. A lot of the damage. And Nata now on his lonesome gets himself knocked up. He's and dead. Nata falls to a double kill. Saken continues to chase forward. Temp's able to find himself a cheeky shot down onto Cabochard. And Jaeger will go down to Saken. Temp's clone is being chased off. Actually, that was the real Temp. As Cabbage, uh, Hantera able to chase him for the moment. Gets the chains not to pop. That's the wrong side of the map that Tempt is running to, trouble. and eventually someone is going to catch up to them. Huntera is just going <laughs> to... He's just going to seal the deal. Tempt is going to give the kill to the support, but all in all, Kamen Corp are putting down a clinic right here. 2-0 and 2 for Saken. 4-2 and 3 for Kabochard. And even though 4-2-3 might not sound too impressive, that's like... Seven kills, seven kill participation on that Lucian. And remember, Cabo is one of the main carries together with Saken onto that team, and everything's going their way. Now, again, Haru sees 113 and gauges 113, but look at that beautiful dodge on the flag and drag. The dash onto Jaeger 113 is outplaying the ish out of everyone this game. And even though we had our doubts for how he played in the first game and how he couldn't find his openings, this game, he's on damn fire. It feels to me a little bit like Harry is playing like he's ahead instead of uh, from behind. As uh, Nata almost goes down there, those feathers would have been enough probably. Scabu now maybe looking for Tempt. Tempt in for a whole lot of hurt here. Gets himself the chains off, gets a whole bunch of additional damage in, but that is the route from the Everfrost. Cabu 
Almost goes down. Wait. Tempt finds the kill. Seiken gets the turnaround. We said it in the first time they met. Tempt was the shining light. And Harry's continuing to play like he's ahead. He has no ult on his misfortune. He's, he's on his lonesome. They're going to find the knockup. And Haru will just lose his life. He's going to fall shortly as Casey's able to find the kill. It's going to be 1-1-3. One, one, Nasa's next to fall. I, I am... I am lost at Haru's decision making this game. Haru is just going way too deep without having his teammates. Again, your most fed member in this team is Tempt. He managed to pull a two versus one, which means on the other side of the map, you've got four members versus three in favor of X7. And Haru pulls the trigger yet again all alone, doesn't wait for all of the members from X7 to get there to actually play the four versus three and gets instantly punished. Yet again, you see Kamekop know exactly where Haru is. Reckless is actually hovering around and now they can sing. are stuck underneath the tower. They cannot fight this. You see that Jaeger is there too, but he doesn't have the flash ult to go in. And by that time, Seiken is down on the side lane, Tip is back in, capitalizes on Nata as well. And X7 end up losing too, whilst they traded a really good kill down in the bot lane uh, with Tem. And right now, KC are on freaking fire. 8,000 gold in the lead, only 15 minutes in. I just, I am flabbergasted by Haru at the moment. It's been very questionable decision making. Tempt is your one shining light. He is the one person who can potentially get you into this game. And once again, Haru on the end of punishment. He is going to flag, he is going to drag, and he's going to jump away. But Seiken is oh, going to continue to chase him forward. Tempt jumps out a little bit, gets the chains off, and they find the knock up. Tempt can continue to run away. They flag and drag again. Still alive. As they continue to chase forward. But here comes Kabu! Able oh. to find the piercing light! Haru dodging away for the moment, but that's going to be the charm coming in. Jaeger's got themselves the bullet time. Nat has to flash on the spot to dodge away. And X7. This was the main criticism of them versus Phantasma. Yes, they were able to come back versus a weaker team, but versus a better team, how are you going to play from behind? And the answer is poorly. This is so, so, so difficult for them. The only signing light is that they have two dragons. This is a Hextech soul that's going to be spawning. So maybe somehow they can sneak in a soul. Obviously, Kamek are going to pick up the first dragon of the game for themselves and deny soul point for X7. But this is almost a 10,000 gold lead pre-20 minutes of the game. And Haru has found Reckless. Yeah, they have found Reckless. Nata doesn't have ultimate, but Reckless does. Haru needs to be careful. He flags away. And that's the shutdown. Gifted over to Tempt. A big injection of gold into that LeBlanc. Very necessary right now. Oh, absolutely necessary. You see that the, the gold gap also closed down a little bit. But right now, it's becoming extremely problematic. Look at Lucian's inventory. Look at 113's inventory. 113 learned from the previous game. He bought the Hex Drinker instantly playing into Temps LeBlanc. More for Mortis already bought for Cabo Shard. Death Cap completed for Seiken, who is absolutely phenomenal on this array. Back to back, 600 gold bounty on him. Five, zero, and three. Seiken today is on fire. Again, the only remaining member from the OG lineup of Carmine Corp that won the back to back Amazon European Masters in 2021. He's not a back to back champion for no reason. And again, they gave him the Ari. They knew he played it in game one. They knew he played it phenomenally in game one. But X7 opted into the exact same comp again. And now, with a massive 8,000 gold lead, they're looking for the execution onto 113. They found him with a charm. They found him with a lockup. A big hit comes in. <laughs> massive ultimate comes in from Jaeger. The Reckless able to answer back out with a kill himself. Here we go. Seiken's got the reset. Chasing up for more. Finds himself a double kill. And it is a one for two for X7. Oh, they're looking for more, though. Oh, that charm was close. That was a one for two. I think this is the best case scenario you can expect. Tempt? Yeah, he's just, he's okay. They find a lockdown. They got the bullet time. Seiken's going low. Nato with the shutdown. Tempt is... <gasps> I'll say it again. Dead. Trouble. Starts with an I, ends Tempt with a T. Tempt is dead. This is a game of, uh, I'll say it in your language, because you're English. This is a game of inches that they're both playing. Inches? They're literally both playing on the details. The only problem is, KC can afford to play the game of inches. X7 the, cannot. 
The difference let's, is KC bought a ruler. So they actually know how much an inch is. Let's watch this again because the previous game, 113 was literally getting bullied by X7 the entire time. Same thing here. Oh, Huge gold drinker right there into four members to keep him alive for longer. And even though Jaeger's ultimate was absolutely fantastic onto Reckless, this is what Zaya thrives at, being dived. She presses R and you don't get no CC and no damage onto her. Reckless has been absolutely phenomenal on that Zaya dodging things. And Tempt right there just walks into the Nautilus and gets out with a sliver of health. Saken gets locked in by Haru and that bullet I think it was like one of the last few ticks. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you gain if you land that chain though? Like a, a little bit of damage. Oh, Rift Tower, by the way. Uh, Junkin Towers. <laughs> it's very late. <laughs> it is very late. I mean, it's still, I'd say, I'd like to say it's early days in this game, but it's also a 12,000 cult lead to the side of uh, Casey. Oh, she's not that much. I was looking. I think it, my maths is off. It's where's like, your, it's where's your late. math? Where's your math? <laughs> it's uh, bad. That's an 8,000 gold lead. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Close enough, though. I got my I got my primary digits wrong. What can I say? <laughs> uh, Tempt, don't die. Okay. <laughs> okay, the NLC fanboy is coming out a little bit. Oh, that was a hook, but a great charm in response. Tempt's able to find one kill. Nata remains untouched for the moment as 113 just running interruption. Ooh. In goes Saken. He's found the charm onto the real Tempt, but he didn't see him. So Tempt blinks out to safety. And that it is a singular kill for X7. That was a pretty good trade, actually, right there. You kill off Hantera, you actually get to grab your jungle as well. The game has slowed down because KC are trying to force plays over and over again. And even though that was a beautiful hook that landed from Hantera, I don't think his team was ready to follow up right there. Kabosha was not in position, Saken was not in position to follow that up. And Hantera blew up instantly. These are some really good trades. If you're an X7 fan, this is exactly what you want to keep on happening because the gold gap keeps closing down. It is a 7,000 gold lead right now. It was almost a 10K gold lead and it's been closed down to a 7K gold lead. I think X7 have woken up, but is it too late? It would be a phenomenal rule comeback for X7. They did do it last game, but man, did they have to fight tooth and nail for it and... KC, very good at playing from ahead. Dragon spawning up, teleports coming in from Kavishard. Jaeger able to use the hex gate to get in and reset comes in from 10th. So it looks like they're just going to give this second dragon over to KC. And I think that's the correct decision. I think X7 just need to get as much gold and as much time on their team as possible. They can and afford to give up a couple more dragons. This is the luxury of spending time and investing time in the early game to take the first two dragons from Haru. The fact that you know that if your game goes south, you have earned yourself plus 10 minutes by having these two dragons until it hits soul uh, for the opponent team by taking all four back to back. Now, the problem is if they do hit <laughs> all four back to back, that is um, a lot of hexa dragons and a soul, yes. which is going to hurt like a truck going into the late game, especially when the Zaya Feather start hitting, especially when Saken jumps onto you, Kabosan onto the Lucian. The bright light for X7 is that KC are composed of a lot of squishy members. And oh my god, Tempt! Wow! And there's the Hex, uh, the Hex Drinker popped. That's a full more actually as well, so even more shielding. Yeah, I feel you on that one, one three. So, again, KC are composed of very squishy members. If you look at Hantera, he's even possibly going for the Hourglass first item, which doesn't make him tanky at all versus the LeBlanc. Does not give him any sort of MR. And remember, Tempt is the primary damage dealer from the side of X7. So if he chucks down somebody, if he kills somebody uh, early in the fight, this is where X7 can get their chance to turn fights around. But Nata gets chucked down that hard, yeah. and if he needs to back off, they lose a lot of the tempo of like pushing waves and getting into the jungle and trying to look for a pick. That was a uh, pretty rough trade there. He's gonna be able to get the reset off and uh, get ever closer towards that, that um... Shirelda's Grudge, although it hasn't actually finished up the Last Whisper or that Warhammer. I'm assuming it's going to be that Grudge. Very, very powerful for all of the Misfortune. As X7 are just trying to get a bit of a foothold in their own jungle again. That's how detrimental this has got. That's how hard it's got 
Someone will have to go towards that bot side. Both Jaeger and Tempt do have their teleport. While Saken and Kavishard, their teleports are on cooldowns. So that's kind of why you're seeing KC group up here in this big death ball. Because they can't afford to split up and then have two members of X7 TP into a fight. Uh, oh, Kassing, and, uh, we might Kassing, just see die. Kassing. That is a greedy place to reset. There have been some questionable choices, let's say. But KC have been able to punish all of them. Now, 113 is looking to dive in, and he's actually going to yoink away the red buff uh, from X7. And again, when you lose a member and when you're behind, it becomes so difficult to play the fights. Hook onto the tank for the moment. They're going to get the bullet time up. He's doing a lot of work. The knockup does come in in time, but 113 is able to survive. They chase in. They find the knockup. Nat is going low. Haru is able to jump out of the cataclysm and actually save the life of his two carries. Oh, look at Meanwhile, Seiken. Look at Seiken. Haru is just continuing to chase. It's it's questionable positioning. I'm going to say that KC are playing like absolute maniacs today. Every single one of them, especially I'm going to put my finger on to Seiken. He has been incredible. They're looking for one more three. Yeah, they are looking for him, but they don't actually have the damage. And you can see there was a massive split there. As Nata didn't realize they were going for that and ignite and ultimate burn by Kassing. That is huge. All the eggs in Casey's basket right now. 10,000 gold lead. 25 minutes in. 9, 1, and 4 forsaken. 2, 1, and 6 for Reckless. And again, Kassing. <sighs> he doing, gets man? spotted and he sees his game spotted. But I think he might have pressed the shop. Looking for his next item right there. And again, 113 is going to take the red buff away. And next seven are possibly looking to try and find the fight. Hantero will find another hook. Uh, I think onto Jaeger right here. Unfortunately for him, it is the Malphite. But this is your tankiest member. And he instantly melts without even getting the ultimate off on any member. Yeah, Nax's ultimate achieved nothing as well. The stopwatch and 113's ultimate meant that he just does nothing. And then Haru just again, just playing very greedy, pushing out constantly. Jaeger is stacking a lot of armor now, but he's still quite squishy. And the uh, grudge on both Reckless and Kabu, they both got a bit of pen to work with as well. Grudge now finished up on Nata, so fighting in chokeholds is a scary thing, no matter how far ahead you are. Three item MF, slowing you down with that bullet time in a, in a chokehold can be absolutely horrific, but Jaeger eating an entire culling and is going very, very low. He's able to speed away to safety, but not before losing his entire health bar. 13 seconds before the dragon spawns. That is so difficult. I do not think that X7 will be able to walk inside the jungle to try and contest for the third dragon. I think their only chance is to wait for a couple more items onto their members and then try to maybe go to try and steal the soul away. And that might even have to be a steal, not potentially a team fight, but it's just so difficult because you're on the wrong side of the map try and steal you're not behind the wall and then you can flag and drag in and potentially steal the dragon and give your life up for it you literally have to walk through the entire choke point where kc will be guarding where they have so much vision on you it's gonna be so difficult for Haru to steal this one away and kc are definitely the front runners for this one kc are putting their stamp down on the whole LFL and NLC rivalry because it was one and one so far. They managed to beat X7 today, and from the looks of it, they're looking to do it again. And remember the last time these two teams played versus each other, X7 were... Well, sorry, the first week they played versus each other, X7 absolutely stomped KC. KC they didn't, didn't get, get a single, single kill. kill. It, was, it was horrendous for them. Back-to-back -back champions reformed, started their opponents, and X7 are trying to pull the same trick over oh. and over again. And if anyone knows how to deal with the same trick, that is KC. 1-1-3. Yeah, they're looking for it. Watch for Nata, though. He needs to get a good ultimate off for the moment. But like you said, Nazonia's hourglass on Huntera means he's very hard to deal with. Bunch of damage out from Tempt onto him, though. Half health in him. Meanwhile, Kabu just getting free time in topside and able to pick up that tower. It's the, This is the problem is 1-1-3 and Huntera basically mean Nata can't ult. They don't even need to threaten him. Just the stopwatch and 113's ultimate means that that's just there's no point in ulting because he's not going to do any damage. 
Exactly. And this is what we mentioned from the draft as well, right? Especially when you're running the exact same composition, KC are so good at reading what you've done. We talked to the coach of KC as well, and you asked him what was different. Like, did you read them? Did you study them better? And they're like, yeah, now we know how to play against them. Now we know how to shut them down. And when you're bringing the exact same composition that they've already beat you on, then it's going to be that much easier for KC. And they're showing how much easier it is for them right now. Now, KC are threatening the Baron. They have complete control of the topside jungle of Harold. Nasa took a uh, interesting portal win. As reckless is going to be forced to ult in response to Nasa. That is huge. If X7 can try to find an engage onto Reckless now that he has no ultimate, this could potentially mean a dead Zaya, and you could potentially try to get a full versus five. Of course, let's not forget that's taking his Giga Fed, and they've got oh, the same. Oh, once again, it's Kasing being chased down and popped. Kavi's able to find him. Ult out from Jaeger defensively as Temps blinks Temps. back in, trying to find Reckless. He flashes forwards. Reckless finds the kill. Nat has to flash away from the charm. And KC, they're just punishing greedy mispositions from X7 time and time again. Happy B also from Reckless that they've been able to get away with a sliver of health. Tempt, they're unfortunate, doesn't get to trade one back. And look at Kabosat's position right there. He wants to blow someone up. Saken as well is guarding it. And 113 is tanking the Baron. This is. 12k gold lead for Carmen called five members into the Baron beat Jaeger. Haru is there, but they will not let him steal. Yeah, Nats has knocked up as well. He's looking for Kavir in response, but he can't do so. 1-1-3, going to eat the bullet time there. Able to find themselves a kill on to the jungler, but Haru is low. Same for Nata. They do have temp coming up momentarily, and that kill does buy a brief respite. That's not even your biggest problem if you're at X7. One minute... 30 seconds. That is a hex thick soul coming up. Yeah. And there's three already stacked up in Carmine Corp's inventory. This is going to hurt a lot when it hits. And honestly, the furthest on top of the charms, on top of Kabosha dashing over, it's going to be so difficult for anyone on X7 not to die. X7 okay. need to be resetting, putting down some vision. They need to set up Possibly even give away the Baron, but I don't think Kamekop are going to do this. I think the Soulies are so valuable for them, but they're definitely going to go for that one first. And if X7 overextend and die, this could be game over. And this is a hard one to check into as well. It's going to make it real hard for the side of X7. Haru having a pretty shoddy game. Kasing as well. He's had a pretty rough one himself, so we need to see what he can be capable of achieving. Oh, his look Jaeger. at Jaeger though. It's an amazing flank, but no one's in position. So even if he hits a four-man ultimate, he just dies. That's the problem is X7 are too scared to step forward. Nice little trade on to 113. Saken is going to get ulted. He's going to get popped. Shut down for Jaeger. Big injection of cash into their tank. As uh, Harry has to flag and drag away from Kavishad, who chases him forward, uses himself the culling momentarily. Reckless doesn't have flash or heal, but does have that ultimate available. Intempt might be looking for a little trade there as okay. Dragon will get picked up and X7 have bought themselves a point where they're now on soul point themselves. Yep. That's a they... much needed pickup. They have barely bought themselves another five minutes until the next Dragon spawns again. But mind you, for a team that is 10,000 gold in the lead, 33 minutes in, Casey are finding it very difficult to open an inhibitor. You see how difficult it is because you've got three extremely squishy members. And even if Zinzao or Nautilus dive in, they're so squishy themselves that they're going to go down instantly. So even though they have like one or two items on top of the counterparts, it's just so difficult to push without having the barrel, without having the soul. So X7 being able to take that one away is massive. Collector finished up on Nata off the back of that base. So the ability to actually really... So terror into KC in these chokeholds. This is a scary place for KC to fight, but again, technically the same for X7. A single hook onto Kissing can really spell the end of, of any pressure in the area. So Kissing needs to play a lot of respect here. Tempt is a little safer, obviously has that blink and it's just continued to like slowly but surely poke out 113. Look how healthy that tower is. It's barely been scratched by X7. 
we are so far into the game, the death timers are going to be so long. If X7 do somehow miraculously manage to find a fight, they could dig really deep into KC's base. And so yeah. can KC. If KC find a fight right here, the game could be over. Jaeger's looking from the side. He's a very tanky boy right now. And Tempt. Oh, oh my god! Oh, Tempt! What? Four versus five is the situation right now. Jaeger is going to tank most of the culling right there, which is going oh. to take him Hello. very low. And again, <laughs> I'm going to say this again. For a team that is 10,000 gold in the lead, K Corp find it so difficult to push that one down. And I mean, again, you see level, level 16 yeah. versus level 11. Boom. Temp. That. He's trying to make the difference. Unbelievable. Temp is going to have a saw back in a moment. Although we're now seeing Nata's got the stopwatch and is Nata's almost full build. I so was about to say, at this point, 10,000 gold means nothing. But it has Apart been the case Jager. for the entire game. <laughs> but it, it has been the case for the entire freaking game. Carmen Cop have had a huge gold lead from the early. And due to the comp that X7 have, it's just so difficult to close the gap. Because once you allow Temp to do that, you can no longer fall versus five, especially because of the Malphite and the Javan being there. Level we 16. get a minute to, to like we get we get a minute to like take a breath. Take a quick breather. NASA needs to not be the one at the front though. That could be very, very dangerous. Tempt, just going to step cheekily forward once again. Get into this bush. Nice vision control here for X7. They have a small pocket that they can play around. And that pocket was how Tempt was able to take out a kill. Just popping Reckless's Edge of Night. Making sure he doesn't have that spell shield. And a good ultimate from Jaeger into Nata could spell a massive opening here. Jaeger's in position for it. Tempt onto Huntera. Oh, misses again. the E this time. Harry's going to get jumped out pretty low. They're going to get a good ultimate off. And now... It's all about Jaeger. Can he find that opportunity? No. Jumping onto Nata. Getting the slow oh off. Nata's burning low. He's going to go down here. The slow might just be his dying breath that saves the day for his team. Nobody else going to go down. Meanwhile, Haru in for a whole world of hurt. He's on the wrong side of the map. Making a run for it. As they're going to chase with the hex gate. And oh, the oh, Haru! Gets the old escape off. I've got a freeze on my screen. I don't know what's going on. I've got a... Oh, no! I think... No, Harry lived. A few okay. technical issues here, but it looks like it's over Damn. for the moment. Temps jumps Damn. in forward, looking for Reckless, unable to find it. Nata is dead, remember. They don't have that bullet time. Get Haru down. making the hero. He steals the burn! Haru coming up huge for X7. Cap is going to try and make sure at least somebody gets out. Temps on the run. He needs to dodge away on everything, but he's slowed by Cap's shot. Kasing will lose his life. He gives his life for his mid laner, but Cap continues to chase forward. That is for the to safety. They're about to get everybody back up. Nata is on the rift and oh my word x7 they're just about able to hold on it's gonna have to be one hell of a defense from them though i don't know if they can hold on it's only tempt and nata the two carries from x7 there is still bullet time so you can actually burst the wave down before he comes anywhere near and casey are gonna back off this is a oh. crazy game that we're witnessing here i never expected it to be a 10k gold lead for the majority of the game and casey not being able to close out the game temp is trying to assassinate oh. hunter again this time it fails really good sidestep from the casey support and 113 sees the opening to dive straight in now you see x7 will back off but nata will burn away slowly but surely and once everybody is split up from x7 this is where kc thrive they've got illusion to chase away with they've got the ari to chase members of x7 what with and Nat and haru <laughs> and haru what a beautiful escape right here sticks around for the baron as well but the best is yet to come for x7 fans because haru will dive into the pit casey yet again do not stop hitting the baron and how will smite it away at 400 hp uh jaeger missed ult entirely as well which is just you know take what you want from that one because if you if you guys are not entertained from the games today i don't know what's wrong with you i, I like how can you not be into oh wow okay bye bye temps health bar to get chunked out pretty heavily, but has got the sustain for the moment. Obviously, 
Still while we were talking, team. yeah, while we were talking, the soul went down for KC. So that is so, so strong with four Hexic Dragons as well. It's going yeah. to hurt so much. Uh, hence the bye-bye. Tempt uh, HP bar. And X7, I'm going to need to look for a miraculous fight. Um, oh! Items don't matter. Gold lead doesn't matter. Everything is even right now. Anything goes. If Temp finds a pick, X7 could end the game. If KC find a team fight, they could end the game. It is anyone's game, and I cannot believe I'm saying this right now because we are 40 minutes in, and it's been a more than 8,000 gold lead for the majority of the game for KC. Temp keeps looking. He does keep looking. Temp is that glimmering hope for this team. Temp's gonna jump in, pop Sakens, Banshee's Veil, Jaeger. We yet to see a massive ultimate from them. If they can find that opportunity, it could be big. Temp onto Kabu, chunks him out heavily here. 1 1 3 jumping in forward as well. Has to pop the ultimate, Jaeger. It's now or never. And it looks like it's never. As they're just gonna have to give up another inhibitor. The team with Baron are crumbling to KC's pressure right now. KC have found a way to try and open up this game because it has been a big struggle due to their comp to close it out with three squishy members getting anywhere near attempt is so freaking scary level 18 leblanc it is so looking. difficult to play anywhere near him he has been doing fantastic both of these games onto the ari uh, sorry onto the leblanc oh, no. but also saken Onto this Ari has looked absolutely incredible. He used the W. Temp has used the W forward. This could be it. Yeah, that might just be it for Temp. He's going low. The teleports are coming in, and Temp will lose his life. Jaeger's in the middle of everyone. He needs to find that ultimate off in time. 1-1-3 one, one, jumps onto Nata. Nata's untouched. He flashes away. Jaeger able to buy a bit of space for himself. Nata still hasn't had the opportunity to get a good ultimate. But there he is! Able to take down one. They find the knockup. They're looking for a second one. The hook from Hantera in his dying breath finds himself a cheeky killer in response, but it's a triple kill for Reckless, and KC find the ace. Finally, they put the nail on the coffin. They find the fawn on their backs this entire time that has been tempted. They take him down, and they put any doubt to rest on if KC is the best team in this group or not, because guess what? They damn are. They are, but I'm going to put an asterisk. It took them 41 minutes of a 10,000 gold lead to close that out. There was a 